Right. Good morning, everybody, from wherever you are watching us, whether on Facebook or YouTube. Karibu sana and welcome to Invest in Tuesdays. This is our second webinar, and I want to invite you and tell you, you know what? You just don't want to learn alone. You want to as well invite as many as you can. So the best thing you can do right now is to share uh, on your Facebook pages or even on your YouTube pages. Welcome as many people as they can so that at least they can all start this journey of growing in their investments. Just a quick recap. Last week, we had an amazing one at the launch of the Investing Tuesdays. And we were talking about starting your investment journey. And we had an amazing panel here that broke it down saying, you know what? You can start from wherever you are with what you have. And so today, we're going to delve deeper. And my co-host will be telling us more. But just before we go there, I want to just play a small snippet, a video, that will tell you what probably you missed so that you don't miss again. Mr. Director, over to you. the COVID situation will affect our economy, will affect uh, a number of years, but it won't affect them all in the same way. The market has made many mistakes. I've made many mistakes. I've made investments in people business. people's businesses, lost money. Investing Tuesdays. All right, there you go. And just in case you think uh, I don't remember, I still do. This is the week which we call Customer Service Week, and we are celebrating all our customers and appreciating them and saying, listen, this is the best time ever to uh, really be uh, careful to look at the customer and say Asante Sana. And so we appreciate you. And what a better way for the NSC as well to uh, start this week with such a journey where we are calling you and telling you that it is possible for you to uh, just widen your investment portfolio. It's not just about the usual kashamba or the usual, you know, uh, just a small business up there, but you can also think the capital markets. So today we have a great lineup of an amazing thing today and I want to uh, at this juncture invite my co-host to tell us what's interesting today. Over to you my co-host. Hi Mina, morning. Uh, today is a very exciting day for multiple reasons. First of all, this conversation started about two weeks ago, the Investing Tuesdays, and what was our topic at that time? Starting your investment journey. So what we're going to do today is going to dive deeper into this conversation. And we have a very exciting panel of speakers today mm -hmm. who are going to take us into baby steps on how to prepare an investment plan. So I hope that our audiences today are ready for an hour packed full of learning on investment plans. Absolutely, and thank you so much, Bansri. And so from wherever you are, I think it's a time to grab your pen and paper because this is just not information that comes 
just by the go. So, um, Bansri, if you can, could you please introduce the people that we have today, the panel that we have today, so that they can uh, absolutely, go absolutely ahead? Absolutely, absolutely, Maina. So, yeah. we're going to start with uh, the, the first panelist to my extreme right is Mr. Alex Mwangi. Alex is, was the head of uh, head secretariat of the Kenya Investment Association Group. He is a financial consultant who, is, who has a passion for training and coaching individuals, corporates, as well as entrepreneurs. And he also prepares and offers financial management programs. Karibu sana, Alex. Thank you. For In the middle, we have the lovely Valentine Jiroge. Valentine is an investment professional and an entrepreneur. She is the co-founder and the CEO of Africa Pockets, which is a personal financial um, company that uh, equips you to be your best self through digital tools and uh, courses. Welcome, Valentine. And finally, the gentleman to my right is Mr. Kamunyu Joroge, who I'm also privileged to call a colleague from the Capital Markets Authority. So Mr. Kamunyu is the head of investor um, education, public awareness, market development, special projects, and corporate communications. He has served in all these various capacities for the last 15 years and has also been instrumental in some of the certification programs in the capital markets. A very, very warm welcome to you, Mr. Kamunyu. Wow, I think this is a loaded uh, <laughs> uh, panel that we have. So gentlemen and lady uh, in the house, uh, of course, plus our host. So last week, as you had, we talked about the starting uh, the investment journey, just introducing this to the people in a language that they can understand. And so today, as Bansri has said, we hope that uh, the people who are watching will be able to sit back and say, you know what, uh, I think I can come up with a beautiful plan at the end of this all. So that's what we hope to achieve. So Bansri, over to you. Okay. Can Excellent. we start off? Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, Kanye, we're going to start off with the first question, which is for Alex. So, Alex, I know you have in-depth experience when it comes to investing, and you've worked in a lot of investment groups where you have played a large role in mentoring individuals and corporates. So today, what I'd really like for our audience is for you to break it down in the simplest way possible. What is an investment plan, and who needs it? Over to you, Alex. Thank you very much for the question and thank you NSC for having us here today to share our insights uh, on the in, on the investing uh, of, of, of the of the just uh, thinking about the investment about course. the investment so ideally first uh, let me first say uh, who requires an investment plan uh -huh. anybody who is willing to invest or who calls themselves an investor mm -hmm. somebody who wants their money to work for them that is a person who requires an investment plan and even from the investment group aspect, uh, you will find that uh, most investment groups that get to survive uh, past their second year, fifth year, is determined purely on their investment plan. Uh, you fail to have an investment plan, uh, then it's just uh, you're planning to fail. As you know, uh, an investment plan uh, is a more it is a more fundamental document for us in terms of we are able to see in terms of. Uh, we are able to see in terms of um, where we are going uh, as humans. We are not rational actors all the time. Uh, we are emotional sometimes, especially in investing. Uh, I remember a particular time uh, uh, these Ponzi schemes came into being, and one of it was the quail farming. Uh, people said it had money, and so uh, <laughs> even with your education, you will find a professor going to invest because it has money. But if they had solid investment plans, uh, they would not go that direction. So for me, an investment plan uh, basically is a process process that uh, helps you identify your financial goals and your financial objectives and helps you match them with your current financial resources that you have. So being able to see the, the final product before even you begin the, the journey, of which uh, for me that is my, uh, my simplest definition of an investment plan. Wow. Uh, if I may interject, because um, I like saying that I represent the people on the streets. So you're saying, yes, it's important to have one and everything else. This plan, it sounds like it's a big document that I need somewhere, you know? Can we just simplify it? Because I know there are people there who are saying, listen, I only get my only 30K and I have to think about my rents and stuff, all those kind of stuff. Can you break it down and tell me what is this plan thing? Do I need to sit down, go to some place that come up with these plans or is this something that you need to sit down but just by yourself? 
Um, that's a very interesting question, Maina. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I, I am more from Jani than you. <laughs> <laughs> we will check after this. Yes, yes, we, we will definitely do that. So yes. uh, ideally, in terms of an investment plan, uh, you, it's not. It's basically putting your thought process. Every, each, each and every single person has an idea mm -hmm. on how to be rich. Yeah. Uh, but not every single idea is viable. Okay. So you need a process in terms of how do you actualize it. So the first step, you must evaluate where you are currently mm -hmm. in terms of um, savings. Uh, so how much are you saving uh, at the end of the month? Okay. Because one fundamental aspect of investing, you must have saved. Mm -hmm. You cannot invest if you haven't saved. Okay. So after you've, uh, you have had that income, uh, done your payments for the basic needs and everything else, so what uh, remains uh, basically your disposable income? So what are you saving? Mm -hmm. So that is the, the first point you begin. Okay. Uh, if you are there in the streets, mtani, whatever you get at the end of the day after you've deducted what you have to deduct, so what are you putting aside uh, for your future investment goals? Because you must start from somewhere. That's the key thing. So you must uh, do a self-awareness and assessment test. Okay. Then when you move from there, you now define what are the financial goals. Wh why are you investing in the first place? Mm -hmm. So I need to retire at 50. I need to have a house at uh, 40, 40 years. You know, the financial independence. You are able to, to put it out there. So you're able to put it in terms of these are my financial goals. Okay. They must be very, they must be, be, be guided by the smart rule. They must be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Hey, so uh, now I think I think I think I got my answer, and I hope our viewers as well got their answers. Yeah. That you need to have what I would call now in my language <laughs> a me time, where you sit down, analyze yourself, so you can make some of those goals, right? Yes. What's our next question now? And, and Alex has actually preempted our next question when yeah. you talked about mm -hmm. savings. Mm -hmm. But before that, Maina, Alex mm -hmm. brought out a very powerful message. Yeah. If you fail to plan, then you plan. No. If you plan, no. Please exactly say it that. again for us, Alex. <laughs> I think it's you if you fail, fail to plan, you plan to fail. I got it right. Exactly. Is it? If Excellent. you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And yes. We're going to put that on. Yeah. <laughs> that has to be, that's a good tagline. Great, great, great. So picking up from something yeah. that Alex had mentioned, my next question is to, to Valentine, and I really want our audiences to pay key attention to what Valentine is going to say next. So Valentine, I believe all of us here and in our audiences strive to make an income to make ends meet. Yes, so as soon as we get our income, I know we, we put aside some money for groceries, we put aside money to pay some of our bills, we pay our rent, and then after I've cleared all of our expenses, we put aside a small pot to ensure that I can go for Nyamachoma every weekend with Maina. <laughs> and finally, after that, there is a pot put aside, uh, saving towards my dream car or the latest iPhone edition that is about to come out. And then after that, if there are a few coins left in that big pot, is what will be get towards investing. And through our research, is what we found that this is how most individuals save towards investing. So what I'd really like to know from you today is, is that approach correct? And really just break it down for us, the importance of budgeting and how one should budget for investing. Definitely. Thank you so much for the question. I think Mina is a lucky guy to be going for Nyamachoma every week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain um, later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to answer your question directly, I absolutely believe that the best way to save for investment is to save first, before you even pay your rent, before you even pay for groceries. And the reason why is because saving for investment is saving for yourself. It's paying yourself first. And generally speaking, you see that um, the government takes money before you even get it into your bank account. So why should you not treat yourself the same way? You know, If you get paid a salary, your income tax goes. If you buy milk, your VAT goes. So pay yourself as well, because you're going to be there in the future, and you have to secure your future. And at some point, you're going to stop working. And so that income is going to dry up. Therefore, you have to figure out how to uh, sort of move it to the future. So the way that I like to approach budgeting is you have your income and first you subtract what you want to save based on the investment plan that you've made. So say you want to have a house when you're 14 yes. and you know you need to have your deposit. 
then what I would recommend is saying if you're 20 years old, for example, you have 20 years to save for that house, you can calculate backwards how much you need to put away every single month to be able to achieve that goal in the amount of time you have, and remove it first. Then everything else fits into what's left. And I think what that forces you to do is really to decide what your priorities are. Mm -hmm. So you will say, is it worth it for me to pay um, this much more rent to live in a you know, nicer neighborhood with a garden mm -hmm. versus to be able to actually own my home in, in a certain number of years? So it makes you decide what's more important to you because, because you have that plan in front of you and you have choices to make. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the other thing that that helps you really know how to do is to make sure that you know when you need to increase your income. I think that's something else that people don't do very well in budgeting. Mm -hmm. You budget based on a number that you've been given day one, but you don't think about where do I want to be in two years, in five years, in ten years, and you don't really have a plan um, that increases your income consistently. Mm -hmm. And there are things you can do to invest in yourself. You can go to school. Um, you can you know, put in more hours at work so that you can get a promotion or a bonus or that kind of thing. So for me, I would say in terms of planning for investments, always plan before your expenses. Well, yeah. I, I think uh, I'm taking notes as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think my take out, mm -hmm. and you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. is that after you have had your me time, you need now to sit down and budget. Yes. I think Definitely. the only part that you kicked me hard is when you said that you need to decide on priorities. It's a bit hard right now <laughs> with all these billboards that we see and all those kind of things. But I think with the mindset of thinking investment, yes. I think it's a wake up call. Yeah, I think you said it right. Mindset is everything. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I just before Bansri asked the other question, I would want to prompt our viewers that, listen, you can ask in questions. That's why we are live. And our panelists, as you can hear, they are really thrashing as hard, uh, are here to help you get yourself into making an investment plan. And we're saying today, we'll invest build a plan. Bansri, over to you. Great, great. So my next question is to, to Kamunyu, and I see this as a very important question, especially in regards to the discussion we are having. So Kamunyu, um, Alex uh, actually broke it down for us on what is an investment plan, who needs it, and mm. Valentine told us how we need to budget for investing. Mm. So my question, to you really, and it's a big debate me and mine are had, so I really want okay. to see who's going to win this debate okay. after you answer, <laughs> is if I have developed that investment plan and budgeted for it, does that guarantee that I'm going to get my returns? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ansley, for that question. And yeah. uh, I'm very excited to be at this uh, you know, panel, especially like he said, today's customer service week, and it's mm -hmm. also World Investor Week. Yeah. As, as an industry, we are celebrating World Investor Week in the entire world, so Kenya is also participating. Um, and I just want just to recap uh, some, some point that was made by Valentine, that, that she said that uh, you, you need first to you know, pay yourself and then you can pay whoever else. Mm -hmm. Um, and and there's, there's, there's another, if, if you want another tagline, mm -hmm. uh, they say that you need to spend what remains mm -hmm. after you save. <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> saving, like saving what, what remains after, after you spend. spend yeah, yes. so, but just ca ca to come to the question, um, I, I want to disappoint you. It's, it's, it's actually not a guarantee that the moment you have an investment plan, then you're sure you know, you're going to get uh, you know, certain you know, returns. But I think it's the closest you get in terms of trying to get in charge or, uh, I mean, quote unquote, predict what it is that you're getting into. So the moment you have um, a plan, like he said, you actually have goals, you, have, you, know, you know how you want to uh, put, you, you, you get to know what, what your risk profile, mm -hmm. so you get to know what you put your money in, mm -hmm. and then you're able to sometimes diversify. So it becomes very easy for you to come as close as you can get mm -hmm. to try to predict or to get a guarantee in terms of what it is that you're going to get uh, in, in the final analysis mm -hmm. after you make investment. Yes. So, Smaina? I, I don't know. Um, I still feel like um, somewhere is still up there. Mm -hmm. You know, every, every, everybody's question is, I don't want to lose my money. Correct. I don't want to lose my money. Yes. You know, I have my hard-earned cash, some 50K I've saved with my lifetime. And then you're telling me I need to think investing. Yes. And so that, that is a subject, especially for you, because I don't want to call you police today. <laughs> <laughs> That's a subject for you today, because... Yes. I, I will give you a story. Mm -hmm. I have a neighbor, mm -hmm. I don't want to name names here, mm -hmm. who bought Mumia's sugar okay. shares 
and they queued for long that time, you right. know? Right now, they, anytime they see these numbers, mm -hmm. they're like, Abana, those people have my money, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I think it's that confidence that people would want to know. Have they lost their money for good when they get in here? Or is there hope? Yes. You know, you're the, you're, you're the beacon of hope here. So yes. please tell us, am I going to lose my money? <laughs> no, there are, there, are, there are actually a number of things I just want to say on, on that particular issue. And yeah. if, you, if you allow me time, then, yeah. then I'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. First, once you're investing, um, you hear about stories about Mumias, you hear about stories about uh, Kenya Airways, but you also need to hear stories about Safaricom, <laughs> you also need to hear about KCB, okay. Equity, who are doing well. So yeah. I think the, the, the key word there is diversification. Okay. So don't put your eggs in one basket, okay. just because you can't be sure that you're going to be able to take care of that basket. Mm -hmm. So just put, you know, in different sort of investments. Okay. Put money in Safaricom, put money in Mumia, so that when Mumia doesn't work out, and Safari can work out. Once you do the net, you're still in the money. Uh, if, 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 you, if you don't want still to be within the capital market industry, put some money in the capital market industry, mm -hmm. then put some money in real estate, and once you, then you combine the whole sum, yeah. you still find also that you, you are, you're within the money. So the first thing is diversification. Number two, get advice. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so don't just grow up into the darkness. So just you need to get advice from their, their professionals who will be able to, to assist you in terms of where do you put the money, why. I mean, for example, if you come currently, a lot of people will tell you that this is actually the time to invest. In every sector you can think about because it's COVID, the market is down, so you expect COVID to go away, and certainly then the market is come, coming up. It's like abracadabla. I mean, if you really want to make money currently, just put money out there, and then you'll be able to, to you know, sort of benefit after all this is done. So get advice. Okay. Number three, and, and very important, is that you need to invest with an end in mind. Uh, the, the issue is that a lot of people will put money out, but they don't know if, for example, if that doesn't work out, then what do I do? Mm -hmm. So you need to have, what's your recourse, for example? Mm -hmm. In the capital market, I mean, capital market industry, the recourse is the NSC, the recourse is the capital market authority, so mm -hmm. you're able to come to us and then we have a discussion, mm -hmm. what happened, and then we're able to do, look at your issue. Mm -hmm. But if you put money in a pyramid scheme, for example, it's just a website sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you're told, this website you put money in, then within three weeks you double the money. Then a couple of months later, the web website hangs. So you try to put your name in, then you can't put your name in. Yeah. So who do you go to? So again, also invest with, your, with, with the end in sight. And then, and, and then also finally, maybe uh, for, for this instance, is that you need to be able to understand your risk profile. Okay. Uh, because uh, there are certain investments you're going to make, and uh, you can make so much money. Because they say high, they have the risk, the higher the return. May I know that? Yeah. So once once you do that, once you do that, then you, you know your risk, and then you're able to know how do I then invest? Okay. Is my money the money I'm lead, I'm ready to lose? Is my money the money that are, is for fees? Mm -hmm. Then how where, how do I put it out there without you know sort of having myself in a lot of situations? Okay. Yes. So let me just get this. Yes. I, that 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 last point hit me hard. That the higher the risk, the higher the return. Right. I hope you guys got that as well. Now. This is just a sentence that I want to put to just confirm to me that I got it right. Mm -hmm. So I think you're saying diversify your portfolio. That's mm -hmm. the term, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, don't just put all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, uh, and I think most people need to know that, that, you know, even the capital markets is just another diversification that we're asking people to think through. Mm -hmm. Because I think most Kenyans just think about, last week we were talking about the burotis and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people think, or yes. starting a biz that goes down. Mm -hmm. So people need to think that, listen, you also need to take risks elsewhere, Correct. you know. Correct. Uh, but now my sentence, the sentence I wanted to throw to you is that I wanted to get an affirmation that investing in the capital markets because you are there, okay. now you in the terms of that name I called you, because, yeah. yeah, that you will at least help me mm -hmm. so I don't lose everything like any other businesses that we see people trying to invest. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're there as a watchdog to also tell me, hey. Uh, you better be careful here, you know, all, all those kind of things, because you can help us on that, is it? No, as, as an authority, we try as much as possible to make sure that uh, if you invest your, your money, yeah. mm -hmm. you not lose uh, your money for reasons that are not market market driven. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you, if you bring money to a stock stockbroker, yeah. they need to be able to put your orders out and, yeah. you know, sort of buy whatever it is that you ask them to buy, yeah. advise you properly. So. 
when it comes to a situations whereby maybe a stockbroker may want to run away with your money, mm -hmm. that's covered. I mean, you can be sure that uh, anybody who is licensed within the capital market industry is someone we have actually been able to go through and okay. you know sort of ensure that this is someone you can actually deal with. Okay. So for that, to that extent, we are able to cover that. But when it comes to you put money out in a company and then the company doesn't do too well, and that's beyond you. Know. I mean, that, that that's okay. that, that's a risk that you you may have to take. Okay. Yeah. But it looks like a lot of work. And, and as just well. the, the yeah. final point, just to mention, is that yes. uh, the other thing is that if in the event that you're not in a position to take those risks, you don't want to invest directly, you can invest through collective investment schemes or unit trust, yeah. whereby you just give your money to someone else, mm -hmm. they then allocate that money for you and they, they'll be able to sort of look, look, look out and see which is the best company to invest in, and then you just wait for your returns. And those are the experts or the guides that you're talking about, right? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, there's a lot of work as well when you're deciding to invest in the capital markets, not just blindly. Yes. You also need to study the companies that you're deciding to invest on a little. It's not that a company is about to sink and then you start asking questions, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's why you need an investment plan Absolutely. in place. And Absolutely. I hope my now we've settled. Yeah. Young Jobs is on you. <laughs> but an investment <laughs> plan does not guarantee good return. After I invest, go ahead. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Great. Yeah. So the next question is uh, to Alex. So Alex, it was very interesting and inspiring to see the passion you have uh, for individuals as you coach and mentor and train them in investments and financial management. So really what we'd want to, to hear from you today is what has your experience been with the youth? Because also the exchange is very focused on this particular market segment and also to ensure that there's more retail participation in the market. And what can we do to entice and encourage this particular group to, to start out the investment plans much earlier rather than later? Uh, sure. Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 a, it's a very uh, uh, compacted question yeah. about the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a youth, so uh, it's something <laughs> which I'm very also passionate. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, uh, from even statistics show, in terms of investment plan, uh, as Maina had, uh, we, we had alluded earlier, when you look at uh, data from the youth fund, mm -hmm. where government was uh, sponsoring and funding the youth, uh, you will be shocked by the results. Most of the, most of the investment plans that uh, the youths were presenting then were just copy and paste. They do not own the document, they do not envision, but they got the money. Mm -hmm. So the results were not, um, they were very shocking in, in the sense that only two businesses out of five mm -hmm. survived mm -hmm. past five years. The rest, as, as soon as they got the last funding, mm -hmm. they ceased to be. So there is a big disconnect between the youth mm. and how they develop the investment plan. Mm. And in terms of even um, them participating in, let's say, in the stock market, mm -hmm. uh, the, only the urban, if I can use that in quotes, mm -hmm. urban youth mm -hmm. know about the, the, the trading on the stock, uh, about shares and all that. But they are very active in terms of other uh, things like gambling. Mm -hmm. It's because the information is out there. Yes. They are able to, to hear the success stories, mm -hmm. which are never told. Mm -hmm. you, you, when you come to the NSE, you will never hear success stories. I uh, hear Miner made this XYZ amount. He is mm -hmm. a youth. I can relate to him. Mm -hmm. But when he does uh, gamble during the weekend, not you. But yeah, not me. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. You, <laughs> your twin brother. Yeah, so <laughs> when he wins, it's all over. Social media, it's all over. Yes. And guys are very quick to do that. Okay. As long as people do not have the right information mm. on how to make money, how to invest, and how to go about the entire process, uh, the retail will always be limited to a few people who understand it. So in terms of the youth, um, I think there must be deliberate effort to reach out, to mm. speak to them in their own language in mm. terms of how can you scale up um, your investments, how can you grow from where you are in terms of what you are doing, and diversify as uh, Njoroge was alluded to. Yes. That's why you are seeing many comedians mm. and many guys in the art industry during this COVID season. Mm. Uh, they are going into depression, others have uh, yes. have taken, t have yes. at attempted suicide, others have already uh, passed on. So it shows if they, if they had somebody to hold their hand in terms of telling them, yes, you make this money, uh, but you can diversify, invest, mm. have an investment plan, 
have a goal mm -hmm. instead of living today. We are called the microwave generation because we like results <laughs> today, today, today. <laughs> After 90 minutes of the game playing, I just know my money will be there. Mm -hmm. So we need to change the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the gambling industry rakes in a lot of money that mm -hmm. will otherwise be used uh, in the stock market and into more productive investments. So I think for me, the fundamental thing is having uh, an investment plan that is tailored to the needs mm -hmm. of the youth. <laughs> Because we have also other investment plans and also mentors who are not realistic in the terms, they, they are mentoring even the youth. Mm -hmm. You get somebody tells you they started their multi billion, uh, they have reached their multi billion empire mm -hmm. by one chicken. So the youth, they, there is that disconnect. <laughs> so they are not getting the practicality yes. bit of it. Yes. Yet they are seeing uh, millionaires minted overnight. Mm -hmm. So that quick, we have to teach them it's a process as I alluded earlier. Yes. It was a deliberate, it, it is a process. Mm -hmm. Investment yes. is a process. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we must make that deliberate effort to ensure that the youth understand it. And once mm -hmm. they understand it, uh, they will be able to do much better. Mm. Yeah. All right. Maybe Bansi could just because you know he's a youth as well, yeah. so he understands yes. us more yes. and understands the youth more. Yes. You have just touched on a button, that betting button, eh? <laughs> and the quick, quick cash after the game. You know, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's actually a very risky. Uh, if I, I don't even want to call it investment. I just, just it, it's just a risky one because if you lose the money, it's gone, it's gone. There's not, you know, if it's a, it's a share, you can say it's already going down. I better, I better sell before I lose everything. It's more even risky because, and that's why you have seen all those cases of the depression you're talking about. Yeah. Guys even committing suicide because you are taken a loan, you had full lizard wear and everything, and then yeah. all the money is gone. Yeah. The village is looking for you because you've taken loans from everywhere. Yeah. So I, I think for the guys who are watching. Uh, you better rethink this whole thing. And just before Bansri, you ask the other question, I want to prompt guys, and I can see questions coming in. We shall be getting to a Q&A. Um, you, so you set, send in your questions uh, live on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, the panel here is going to answer them um, so that at least you can learn. Because today we are saying you, you better get a plan after this conversation. Sit down, get your plan, and start thinking investments immediately. Bansri? Great, great mind. I really like where this conversation is going mm -hmm. and I think now we're getting into the practical side of things. Mm -hmm. So with that, my next question is uh, really to Valentine and I believe we've covered a lot on the more on the theory sides of yes. what constitutes an investment plan mm -hmm. and I want to take this conversation a notch higher, mm -hmm. Valentine. And for that, I want you to tell um, the audiences tuned in today mm -hmm. how and how would you start to invest today? If I was starting today, yes, that's a great question. And and you're right. We've we've talked a lot about the theory of start with a plan, save fast, and then now go into the investment. And for me, I would start by understanding my risk profile. Um, that's I think one of the key things that makes your investment plan successful. And Jorge already alluded to high risk, high reward. But it's I think something that uh, escapes people is that high reward, high risk. Mm -hmm. So if your rate of return is higher, it means that the risk you're taking is also much higher. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that is useful to know is the risk and return spectrum. So what investments fall along that spectrum? And on the lower end, you have government bonds. So this is lending money to the government of Kenya. And this is considered almost risk-free. Actually, it is considered risk-free because the government will rarely default. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen it happen in other countries, but mm -hmm. in, our, in our country, it hasn't happened. We are thankful. Um, and so when you lend money to the government, you're, you're kind of guaranteed almost that it will come back. Yes. And then on the very high end, you have your quail eggs, you have your forex, <laughs> you have gambling, if I think, I don't even think yes. it enters the graph, it's beyond. Yes. Um, and so you want to understand the investments that fall along that spectrum and what you're comfortable with in terms of risk. Mm -hmm. So once you've understood what you know, your risk factor is, and, and we talked about maybe the money is for school fees, mm -hmm. and so you want some sort of guarantee there. Or maybe the money is for your trip to Greece and you can afford to lose it a little bit more. So that's what determines how much risk you take. So if it, the money is for school fees, you don't want to lose it, you put it at the very low end, you start with bonds. Mm. But if you're willing to you know, take a little bit more risk and you have more time, then you can go higher on the spectrum. You can, you can go into business maybe or you can invest in the stock market. And so that's how I would start.
Okay. Um, yeah, and I guess to add, if there was nothing else, if, if I'm not able to determine where it goes, unit trusts are a very good option because they pull all of these investments together and you're exposed, you're diversified, um, and you're, you're getting a, a good rate of return compared to the risk that you're taking. Yeah. I like that. I, you know, uh, I'm just taking notes here. Are you making <laughs> risk profile. Yes. Sounds like that sit down as well and evaluate it yourself. Yeah. Are there people who help people uh, evaluate themselves in this kind of thing? Yes, definitely. There's a lot of financial advisors who will be able to tell you this. There are also, you know, there's a lot of information on the internet okay. um, that will help you understand what the risk spectrum is, okay. at least to begin with. That way you know if, if you really, really don't want to lose your money, where to stop. Okay. Um, at least. Then I think I would always, always suggest talking to someone uh -huh. who understands you and your circumstances a little bit better and then they can mm. advise you better. Mm. I always say don't take investment advice on the internet <laughs> mm. because um, it's very difficult to know what the circumstances are because you could be the same age, you could have the same income, but maybe one person supports their family and the other person doesn't. Okay. Mm. Yeah, These right. two people can't afford to take the same risk, yeah. even if they look the same. Um, from the outside. Okay. So I would say start by educating yourself. Mm -hmm. um, like Alex said, start by getting the knowledge that you need. Start by understanding what is a bond and, and how much is the return and is that good or bad? Mm -hmm. um, how does it change from country to country and why is that? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then from there, when you go to speak to somebody, you know that you have some basis of knowledge. You're not mm -hmm. just taking everything they're telling you. Yeah. You've educated yourself to some extent. Great. Uh, just to, I, I mean, we have questions coming in. There's a guy who says thick and fast, so they're coming in. And so keep sending them as well. Keep sending them as well, because we're going to answer that. We're just about to jump into uh, that conversation. So our viewers, wherever you are, send in your questions. Bansri, yes. could you have the last shot before we get to the Q&As? Q&As, absolutely. Yeah. So Kamunyo, you know, we are trying to now go to the practical side of Correct. things. And mm -hmm. Valentine has nicely opened that uh, practical conversation for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So um, Kamunyo, for, for someone who is starting at 10,000 shillings, let's say Maina. Yeah. Maina today wants a, yeah. to invest 10,000 shillings. <laughs> that is an example. Yes. Give us a guide, step mm. by step. Take our audiences through that. How do we start out? Okay, very well, interesting. It's it's a very nice time to have uh, you know Kenya shillings ten thousand even with all with all this COVID. Uh, no. but, but maybe before I, I get into that, I just wanted to dramatize the the whole g gambling discussion. Yeah, um, you know I, I like giving this example. Gambling is like a gentleman comes to your village mm -hmm. and then uh, tells you, all, "All you guys put money in this sack." Yeah. So you put that money in that sack. And then what will happen is that the gentleman come in the evening, give him some five people, you know, some 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. Then he puts the money in the, in the sack or at the back of the, whatever they are, or the back, yeah. and then run away with the money. Oh and then the rest of you are told to disappear. That's actually how <laughs> gambling actually works. So it's actually theft. So, uh, but just coming to your question uh, about... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we must think so that in it's theft. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, just coming to the question uh, um, around you have 10,000. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think, I think one of the things that we, we have to agree uh, with, with uh, 10,000 is quite some sensible amount of money. Yeah. And I think there are issues around your, your risk. Where have you gotten that money? What's your source? Okay. Uh, so because, for example, if you got that money and it was meant to be paid fees in a month, yeah. uh, then you can always put it in a bank and ask for some small amount of money from the bank. Yeah. But if it's money that you are willing to put out for investment, I, I don't want to think about it in terms of uh, not going too much for diversification, but going secure, going to a, a port that is actually secure. And I'm thinking about, for example, uh, I, I know uh, within the audience we have Wagema, and you tell you that he has, he does a makiba. If you do, if you buy a makiba, it's three thousand, uh, you know, for for someone who's starting. So with three thousand, you can start beginning to put money out in a bond. Yeah. I mean that, that that's one, one one source that you can you can actually think think mm -hmm. through. Um, again, you can put this money in the capital market industry. Uh, you can buy, for example, a share. If you think about it, is um, with currently with two shillings, you can. I mean, uh, some some shares are costing two shillings. Mm. You need to buy a minimum of a hundred. 
So with 200 shillings, you're already beginning to invest <laughs> in the capital yeah. market industry. Yeah. So you can also come, to, come, come, come into that market. But I think uh, what you need to do is, for example, if you're someone who is knowledgeable, uh, you pretty much have an idea around what areas that you want to get into. One, to, one of the things that you need to look at is scale. Um, how much can I get into that and how much I, am I able to diversify within that particular you know, sort of amount of money you are, you, are, you are getting. In the event that you find that scale is not there, I'm not able to diversify, go into a, a secure investment and put money, money in there. And then once money gets, you know, the next time you get return and you continue getting your returns, then you're able to put money in different okay. sort of investment. Okay. Yes. I think that's and, but that's not a damp rule. Mm -hmm. It's really just an advice about how you can actually go around it. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a really good start. Mm. By the way, that guy called Bagema, he made me throw in some cash. Yeah, he did. And when, when I was paid the other day, I felt, wow, this is real. Yeah. Now, um, 10K, Why, there are some guys in the, fi in, in, in the field, they are laughing because yeah. <laughs> the money came through, yes. yes. Um, the 10K that you're talking about, mm. uh, it's interesting that you said even 200 shillings, by the way, it doesn't even have to be that 10K, that mm -hmm. even as little as 200 bob, mm -hmm. you're a shareholder in the company. Mm -hmm. That's really encouraging to, to, to the people that it, it's not about the big money. money and yes. you mentioned that last week, that you can start uh, with what you have mm -hmm. and get yourself as well talking as a shareholder mm -hmm. in another exactly. company. Now, uh, I want to jump in into the questions, Pansri, uh, yes. uh, so that at least we can get some questions answered. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, there's a, there's a guy I know, very passionate, and he's asking a question here. Um, Conrad Afande, yeah, yeah, very passionate man. He said, good forum, guys. Question for Mr. Kamunyu, that's you. Uh, I'm receiving questions about an upcoming diaspora forum this week. Please uh, let us know uh, the time, major interest. Do you want to quickly mention that before? Absolutely. We uh, as part of World Investor Week, uh, we, uh, while well, we are doing this today, but obviously on, on Thursday as well, we'll be having a diaspora conference to be on Facebook. Uh, it will start at 4 o'clock mm -hmm. and I uh, will be there, I will be speaking to Ken Kenyans in the diaspora, but obviously if you also are Kenyan and you want to get information, okay. you can actually come in. So guys of diaspora, you got a session there. Bansri, do you have the other question? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. This one I think I will channel to, to Valentine. It's by a gentleman by the name Dishon Mabashi. I hope I got that right. So, so Valentine Dishon says, saving before you spend, as you say, what what if whatever remains is not enough for your monthly expenses? So that even after you have saved, bef af after you have saved before spending, you find yourself going back to your savings. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what I would say to that is we go back to priorities. And this is where you have to make some choices. And sometimes they are hard choices. Um, I've heard of people who have decided to start eating vegetarian food all the time to reduce their expenses. Mm -hmm. And if your goals are important, then some of these sacrifices become worth it. Mm -hmm. Because you do it for a short time, and you're able to accumulate the money towards your goals, and it really helps you accelerate your life. Mm -hmm. And the second option is to think about how to increase your income. Mm -hmm. So this could be from your job. This could be doing something else on the weekend. Uh, that also helps you improve your job. It could be um, starting a side hustle, although I usually say approach this with caution, but you could think about it, increasing your income. Okay, Bansri, there's a question. Yes. And I know you're hosting, but I want to ask it to you to answer it, because somebody's mm -hmm. asking, where can I access chats on the products uh, I think the NSC offers? So, uh, that's John Sagwe. Would you want to tell John? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> John should know that these are fully accessible on our newly launched NSC app, yeah. and that can be downloaded at the touch of a button. Okay, yes. thanks, Bansri. Yes. There's another question here. I think Vincent Kamau is making a comment. Uh, I think this is uh, after Valentine spoke that the risk factor, uh, this is very powerful. Mm. And I think people really need to evaluate that so that at least you can know uh, your levels of risk. There are people, if they uh, just invest some 2K, they will not sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you know that kind of people. Um, so I think Daniel is also asking a question about the NSE, and I, the question is about where, where is the NSE challenge? It's still there, mm -hmm. I believe, so Bansri, is it? Yes. It's still it there, is. and you can access that yes, as well. Yes, it's just because of COVID this year, mm. we're not able to do it as we would normally run it, but okay. it's still very much part of our activities. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, my knife, if I may, yeah. the next yeah, question to, to, to Alex. Yeah. Alex, um, for investment plans, what is usually an ideal duration? And is there some level of flexibility in these plans? 
Yeah, so in terms of um, investment plans, mm -hmm. uh, investment plans are live documents uh, and strategies. Uh, you understand that the economy keeps on changing. So the investment uh, plan that you had also have to keep on uh, being, uh, mm -hmm. being modified uh, to ensure that uh, it's alive to the prevailing economic conditions. Mm -hmm. So in terms of an investment plan, uh, you have the short goals in terms of uh, whatever you have laid out, mm. then the medium goals, and then the long-term goals. For medium-term goals, uh, those ones are basically 12 months. Mm. So you can decide after every three months, I will be assessing these goals. Uh, am mm. I in the right track? Yes. Am I able to attain it? Uh, am I attaining or do I need to save more, push more? Mm. So ideally, it's something that keeps you in check and reminds you of the end product. Having a visual of the end product and where you are in 12 months, if you, your, your financial goal is maybe go get a PhD and maybe you require a million shillings to do that and uh, your savings to add that and then in the third month you are not even have raised, you have not even raised the third of it. Mm -hmm. So you need to readjust some of uh, your saving strategies towards that goal mm -hmm. uh, or uh, try and expand uh, your income. So. Basically, for investment plans, uh, they, are, uh, they keep on being monitored, especially in the implementation stage. You must have very clear guidelines on how you evaluate uh, your goals, even in terms of the, your investments. Whether you have invested in the stock exchange, you need to keep on changing so that you do not end up having more of Mumias and KQ. Yes. You need to keep on readjusting and seeing mm -hmm. this is the, where, where, the, where the companies are going in terms of growth. So yes. it is a live document which should always be speaking mm. to your end product. I hear yeah. you. Okay, okay. There's another question. Uh, I think this one will be well addressed by Kimunyu. Mm. How, how do we verify brokers mm. and are they licensed by CMA? Mm. Okay, uh, if, you, if you want to know whether a broker is actually licensed, you can go to the CMA website. Mm -hmm. mm. That is cma.or.ke, www.cma.or.ke. You can also go to this NSC website as well, nsc.co.ke. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for that. I think uh, you got your answer, so don't just run to any broker out there. I'm just reading through the comments, quite quite, quite of them come yes. in. Remember that this is your session. You can be sending in your question, whatever you have about making your investment plan today. So keep it coming. Uh, there's another pointer here, uh, I think, uh, uh, I'm just trying to, I, don't, I hope I have not lost this. Uh, where can I get, where can I access uh, chats? I think that one we have addressed, that the yes. chats are still available. Yes. Sorry, they're coming so fast, so I'm trying to scroll along. <laughs> Some people are just saying, I am here, which is okay. Keep on, keep on, keep on being there. Mm. Um, is there another question that I have missed? No, I think, let me just go back to Valentine as they're streaming in. Please uh, keep them coming. Uh, Valentine, you talked about cutting back. There are some people who even taking vegetables uh, so that at least they can meet their financial <laughs> goals. I hope I got it right, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think this element of budgeting, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. Let's admit, I, um, I don't want to mention the model of my phone, but there are some people with, uh, for, in fact, I had it's called Huawei. It's not Huawei, like I used to. <laughs> sorry, it's not mine. It's somebody else. There's a lot of pressure to just keep up, you know? Uh, we even have the Kenyan versions of Kardashians, you mm -hmm. know, keeping up. Guys, I, I don't want to mention them. They might say I'm becoming their enemy. So there's a lot of pressure of young people especially to think that, you know what, I, I just need to be on the game. I just need to show myself on the good times on Instagram and the likes. Mm -hmm. And so the element of saving, budgeting, what is that? The only thing I'm budgeting for is for my, what is that, what's the latest phone, Bansri? Is it the... S what? Uh, okay, that one, S20, accent. something like that, you know? <laughs> I was just trying to put it on the spot, you know? <laughs> but I don't know what, you, what would be a comment to them yeah. right now, because at the end of it all, it, it's, it's a chasing after the wind, and probably that money that you saved us so much, I'm saving to gave for a phone. Mm. Right now would be, if you bought Safaricom shares, you'd be smiling all the way to the bank. Mm, yeah. I don't know what's your comment on that. I think it's such a big issue. Yeah. Um, this this peer pressure, this FOMO, it's FOMO actually yeah. that you feel, and mm -hmm. and you find yourself spending money on things that you don't care. Sometimes not that much about. Just just hold it that because I know Kamuni is wondering FOMO. <laughs> 
Just go ahead. <laughs> fear of missing out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. <laughs> Minor, he's still part of the youth. He's still part of the youth. No, no, no. no. I noticed that I tweaked there, uh, you know, so. But I, I don't want to keep up with the mind. So. Yeah. <laughs> Just go ahead, though. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, FOMO, FOMO in spending is such a big factor of, of, like, going over budget, of spending money that you didn't plan to spend, which mm -hmm. is, you know, the first step of derailing your investment plan. And at Africa's Pocket, we talk a lot about um, mindset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think when you have goals, it becomes so, so clear mm -hmm. why you're doing the things you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult when you're young to have those goals. Mm -hmm. But you can think about the things that are important to you. Maybe you like to travel. Mm -hmm. So let's say that that's the thing that you've seen on Instagram and you said, actually, I want to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's about um, making that a part of your sort of year goal or your life goal for the mm -hmm. or your life plan for the year and mm -hmm. saying this year I'm going to travel to Diani. Then you have this thing that you're working towards mm -hmm. and the iPhone or the Samsung doesn't um, mm -hmm. you have to decide am I going to go to Diani or am I going to do Samsung? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And it again makes you really decide what your priorities are. So I th I really, really believe in goal setting. I think it is one of the most important things because like, you know, everybody wants to lose weight at some point in their life. You say, this year I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to go mm. to the gym. <laughs> then you go to the gym, three, you know, three, the first three weeks, yes. then you stop. And the reason why is because you don't have New a goal. Goals. You don't know how many kgs you want to lose. Yeah. Then you don't have a plan. So you don't say, I'm going to go to the gym on Wednesday morning mm -hmm. when I'm free. Yeah. And then you're left making small decisions along the way all the time. So for mm. me, I think with, with goal set, what goal setting does is that it pre-makes the decisions for you in advance. Okay. That way, you're not um, making decisions when there's a temptation in front of you. Okay. Mm. They have been made for you. Mm. And the thing that um, at Africa's Pocket we talk about a lot is automation. So when you decide that this is your goal um, and you say this is important to me, then you put that money aside automatically. You don't have to do it yourself every month. Put a standing mm -hmm. order. Mm -hmm. um, or even, you know, you, you can talk to your bank and tell them every time I get money, if you're a freelancer, mm -hmm. you can tell them every time I get money, put 30% of it in a different account that mm -hmm. I can't access. Okay. So there are very many tools available yeah. to you to make sure that you stick to your goals. And then if somehow you have the 70K at the end of the day to spend on your S20, mm -hmm. then good for you. But at least you still done the things you had planned to do. Okay, thanks yeah, for that, yes. Valentine. And maybe, uh, Alex, if I may bring you in, at some point you talked about role models, you know, people who have made it through, especially mm -hmm. uh, through the capital markets. Uh, I think you said they are a bit shy, but there are quite a number of them. I know a few who we salute from afar because, you know, they, they, made, they made it big time. Mm -hmm. Now that you're there and there are young guys just like you or even younger like you and they're looking at you, I don't know what you would tell them just to encourage them and to tell them this is another uh, platform that you need to think through about investing, even as you make your plan. Um, thank you for the question. Yeah. And uh, uh, speaking to my fellow youth uh, yeah. in terms of uh, changing the mindset, in terms of trying to look, uh, yes, uh, in terms of trying to change their mindset in terms of whatever they are spending their money on. Yes, you can go to Dubai and you can go to Diani yeah. mm. and th the whole concept about uh, investing is also having fun when you're investing mm. uh, oh. rather than just eat vegetables <laughs> <laughs> you can still you can just decide I, I will skip my my lunch let's yeah. say you spend 300 shillings for your meal yeah uh, times 30 uh, that's a lot that's of money that's like 9k 9, 000, right 9,000 times 12 uh, this is good in maths. Yeah. 108. 108. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. You are, you're going to Dubai. You <laughs> just simple, mm. basic uh, plans that's good. that meets your end goal. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, the, the problem is that uh, the youth, uh, in terms of uh, their spending habits, it's cash comes in as fast as it, they, they get it. They spend mm. it right then, there, right there and there. That's mm. the problem. Mm. Lack of an investment plan. Mm. That's why even maybe that's why the the the, the mentors shy away. Mm -hmm. They say you're going to a mentor who has already made it, but you have an expensive phone than him. Mm -hmm. you, you, your your wardrobe is more expensive yes. than him, but you're saying you do not have something to invest. You know, <laughs> yes. yeah. so you have to cut back, as she was saying. Okay. In terms of what you don't require, okay. investing is a sacrifice. Yeah. If I want to drive a vehicle in. Uh, and yeah, uh, there are things that I have to sacrifice. Mm. I have to recheck myself. Mm. So when you're doing that, mm. you do not cut on everything, but let, let it be a habit that 
um, you're having fun doing. Yeah. Personally, I have fun saving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once we closed the door, when COVID came, we closed our doors for six months. No income, nothing. But you're paying bills at the end of the day. You're paying rent, you're doing everything. Nothing changes yeah. because you had a cycle of of saving. Yeah. So, yeah. And that is something that I learned when I joined even the association. Mm. Uh, my boss told me, if you can't save, mm. yeah. if you can't live on your savings for the next six months, then you have no business even working for us. Yes. Okay. So I just took it and I just did for one year. So I just decided even when COVID came this year, that I'm just off. Yeah. So for the next, okay. until right now when you, things are starting opening up, that's when you're getting back to the game. So you must make it fun saving. Mm. Saving is not a punishment. Yeah. It's, it's fun. When I save 50% of what I'm earning or what I make with my passive income, I make sure 50% must go there because I do not change my lifestyle. My lifestyle is just the same. I eat the same plate of, I eat the three meals, mm. live in the same house, yeah. pay the same rent, do the same things. Yeah. So, and I'm okay. So being content where we are and um, not losing sight of where you want to push in terms of investment. Okay. But then speaking of which, eh, uh, COVID really hit people hard. Eh? Yeah. If you hadn't saved, that was a time where people said, by the way, there's something called savings. <laughs> So yes. I think it's a season now. It's a season now because mm -hmm. everybody's life was almost coming to a standstill. Yes. Bansu, is there another question yes, there? Yes, I, yeah. I, I think uh, that's a very interesting perspective you've put out. And yeah. I think now with COVID, we've also um, sort of realized that you need to save for a future you cannot really even look into. Because I know people who are now saving for rent 12 months in a row. They're not too sure what's going to happen tomorrow. Because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people also make really massive adjustments which they were not prepared for. So yeah. saving and having an investment plan is extremely important. Yeah. And also what I've picked up from our conversation here is a lot to do with mindset. Mm -hmm. When you're putting 100,000 towards buying an iPhone, mm -hmm. it feels like a very little thing. But when yeah. you're putting the uh, 100,000 towards investment, you're starting to feel like it's a big, long discussion. Yeah. But sometimes going the long haul is paying back to yourself, just the way Valentine put it. So I think the, this also sort of is um, tying up with the conversations with, with uh, our panelists in the earlier session. And there's a lot that needs to shift in terms of how we're budgeting, how we're investing, and actually having a plan in place. Yeah. So I don't know, Maina, this conversation has been very interesting for me. And I feel like I have so many questions too for the panelists. Mm -hmm. There's so many coming through on our uh, live stream. but. Yeah. Um, I know time is not almost on our end, yes. but, but I still want to milk one more uh, <laughs> advice from <laughs> Um I, I would want you to comment on the patience levels uh, <laughs> when we're getting on the capital markets. Yes. I know every investment requires that, yeah. Yes. But what would you say? Because there are people who say, you know, look, like he used some terms here, long term goals, uh, <laughs> short term, <laughs> quick term, I don't know. <laughs> What would you want to say on that? No, that's a very interesting question because, I, and I think it's a, thank you very much for asking that question because it's, it's <laughs> ma it makes me make a couple of points. Uh, the fact that the capital market industry, for example, yeah. is a long-term investment mm -hmm. sort of Absolutely. market. Yes. But a lot of people think about it in terms of you, an, an IPO comes in, yeah. you buy some shares, and the moment the IPO is over, you sell those shares. And I think <laughs> that's absolutely not the case. So uh, we, we talk about three to 10 years. That's what yeah. you're thinking about in terms of when you come to the capital market industry. Okay. Those, that's when you get the returns. And I can give you a very quick example of Safaricom. Yeah. yeah. People bought Safaricom at five shillings. Yeah. And then Safaricom started nose diving yeah. into four shillings, into three shillings, into <laughs> two shillings and 70 cents. Yeah. Then a lot of us just went there and sold. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the people who knew what they were doing, they just come and pick them at two, two shillings. shillings and 70 cents. Mm. And then currently we're talking about mm -hmm. 30 shillings. So, I mean, you need, you need to stay there with the long haul. Okay. Yes. I know we tackled this question, and I think somebody was asking in alluding to whether they, how they can start their investment. Mm -hmm. And I would want you, Alex, to probably tackle it in. I have my 5K. Okay, you guys have talked very nice. You have told us about uh, coming up with a plan. I think I already know the plan I have now. Uh, somebody maybe has made it. I have my 5K. Where do I start, man, so that I can start calling myself an investor in the capital markets? I don't know this is a random one, but Alex, do you want to... Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, ideally, first, before even having the, 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 whether it's 5K or even 2K, yeah. the most important thing when you're going to invest, yeah. have information on what you're investing into. Mm. Okay. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Whether it's the stock market, you, mu you must know w what is 
Safaricom, what, what, what is the outlook of Safaricom? Mm. Basically, there is a lot of information you're able to read uh, in terms of even, let's say, mobile data. There is a lot of mobile de data. People are consuming that. So it means that there's, there's something is going to happen to their, to their share price. It's going yeah. to rise. So yeah. you must always be, be able to see those small, small things. Mm -hmm. And for me, as long as you have information, mm -hmm about where you're investing, I can tell you for free, mm -hmm. for free, mm. there is no wrong investment. Okay. Mm. That is something I can tell you. Um, there are stories uh, yeah. that I can share. Uh -huh. uh, a very simple story. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a simple guy yeah. who does sell shirts. Uh -huh. um, t 10 shirts a day yeah. at three, 300 bob. Yeah. He gets them at 100 bob. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the initial uh, investment is 100 times 10, 1,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When he goes to sell, he sells at 300. Mm. He's making some good cash. Mm. 200 bob each. It's somebody whom I, I had to be there actually to see it and actually sell with him for, for a straight month. Wow. He was paying me. I, we did it every single time I was coming from work. <laughs> at 7 to 9. Yeah. Just yeah. to see, is this true? Yeah. Because the, the investments he's doing, when he tells you he has shares in the stock market, yeah. and he's driving, yet he's there, yeah. mm. it leaves you questions. He tells you he doesn't require much in a day. Okay. Give me a thousand, I will just multiply it times three. Mm. Wow. Easy. You just not need to take the 5,000 to the stock market, mm. multiply it, then take whatever you have to the, the NSE. Mm. You're good to go. All right, can we just pop in? About the mechanics, I know between me and Basley we can talk about that. Yeah. Um, so actually you have already known your information, you already know your risk profile. Yeah. How do you actually get to invest? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so there, there are two ways you can actually go through it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a gentleman called Wagema has already brought us the NSC app. Mm -hmm. So straight away the moment you go to NSC app, then you're able to take yeah. the, 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 the yes. direction. But if you actually want to go through the broker, a route, you actually need to start by opening a CDS account. Mm. It is free. No, yeah. we don't say free in capital market. We say it's zero shillings <laughs> <laughs> to open a CDS account. You pay yes. shil uh, zero shillings. Yeah. Then from there, then you need to approach a stock broker. Okay. You're going to sit with a stock broker. They are going to open a trade account for you. Mm. Yeah. And then you put money into that account. Mm -hmm. And then pretty much what's going to happen is that as and when you want to make an order, either through discussion with a broker or through your information that you have, yeah. you just need to give the broker an order. He'll yeah. go to the market, buy or sell for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then okay. yes. that's it. And, and yeah. minor, the beauty of what Kamunya has just said is yeah. you have one platform, the NSC app, yeah. all the broker apps in it. Yeah. And you can open your account also at the touch of a button. You don't have to physically go to broker offices anymore. Mm. All the information is available. Yeah. You just need to start trading. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks a lot, Bansri, for that. And just to tell our viewers, all the questions that will come even after we're done with this discussion, remember we'll still answer them. But I would want to end with this just one question that I've seen that is quite uh, loaded. Let me read it as it is. Mm. As a freelance creative, I've always felt that a lot of investment plans and products offered are more tailored to monthly salary earners who can be more deliberate with their savings. That's true, by the way, yeah, because it's easy to check that. What investment advice can you give to freelancers who work and earn on a project-by-project -project basis? I think, Valentine, mm -hmm. do you want to talk to Wanzilu? Sure. Uh, that's a, a great, great question because so many of us are going into freelance now. Yeah. Um, the way that I would do it is I'd start by taking an average of the three worst months I've had. So think about the, the worst performing months you've had in your freelance career. Take an average of the three and then decide what percentage of that you want to, you have to save to achieve your goals. Then from there, talk to your bank and tell them to put away that percentage every time you get a check. That way, you get an average amount over the year um, that's close to, it's quite predictable. It will be quite predictable, and it will be more than, than what the average three months tends to be. OK. That's what I would say. OK. Yeah. I hope, Wanzilu, you got something out of that. Now, I think it's time to close now. Sadly, uh, it's, yes. uh, we could have said a lot of things here. Mm. But you know, just to, tell to, uh, to talk to our viewers that, listen, it doesn't end this way. Every other Tuesday, Investing Tuesday is your day. Free information given to you so that you can get uh, yourself started on the investment journey. Maybe parting shots. Um, less than uh, 45 seconds. And if you feel energized too much, make it one minute. 
Uh, maybe I'll start with you, uh, when you, you could start with telling us. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, it, this has been exciting and the questions are very useful. Yeah. And, and I think they're coming from a point of knowledge. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I've, ex I've enjoyed sort of interacting with uh, the public. But I just want to talk as a regulator now. Yes. Uh, in terms of <laughs> saying that, for that. <laughs> once you come to the capital market industry, uh, if you had any problem within the industry, be sure that the CMA is there. Yeah. And as and when we are bringing uh, people to the capital market, be, be they coming with IPOs, be they coming to issue a bond, we actually go through them and you know, sort of make sure that the person who is coming has really given all the information they need to give. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are not coming you know, hiding, so that they're actually opening themselves up. And then when it comes to stockbrokers, you know, fund managers, investment banks, we actually go through, we do on-site and off-site inspections, we check their returns. So we ensure that you are able to invest in an environment where in the event that you have a problem, mm -hmm. then you have a recourse. Valentine? For me, I'll say um, save before you spend. I think it's one of the more important things to do. Set your goals. And once you've done that, if you don't have the information on how to invest, educate yourself. Find somebody you can trust. Learn how to understand what companies do. And then start. You've heard that all you need is an app and 200 bob. So there's mm -hmm. really no reason not to start. Wow. Absolutely. Alex? <clears throat> I will first thank NSE for having us uh, for this session. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would like to speak to the youth and I would wish to tell them it's never too late to start investing mm. and it's never too early to start investing. Mm. And uh, having a session like this, I think, and having an app like this that enables you just to save us, uh, to buy shares as little as 200 and have that convenience. I know we as the youth do not like uh, complications of going to offices and all that. Just having it at the convenience of your hand and being able to buy shares um, instead of buying three drinks on a weekend, buy two, buy, buy more shares on one. I think that is the conversation we should have. Uh, have fun as you invest and you will ultimately get mm. to actualize your financial goals. Mm. Wow, that's yes. true. Yeah. So, so even as the exchange, we'd like to thank all of you for taking your time out and giving us all this information that you have. It's been a very insightful session and we're going to keep engaging you. And we'd just like you to keep promoting the message that you've put out here as well. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. So Ban Street means, uh, looks like, because uh, it's your turn to buy Nyamchum, uh, <laughs> looks like uh, you need to cut down. Don't buy a kilo, buy half. I, I think <laughs> so. Let's think of throwing I the other side, so. is it? There'll be more vegetables <laughs> in the groceries going forward. Yes. All right. I just wanted to read three things that were just takeouts for me. Eh? Number one is that uh, when you, I got that it, it's safe. CMA is safe. It's doing all its best to ensure that our money is mm. safe, right? Um, it's never too late to start. Mm. Save before you spend. My goodness, there are so many. If I was to write down a book, mm. <laughs> I would take out a few things. And to all our viewers online, thank you so much for joining us on YouTube and Facebook. If this information was helpful to you, please make sure that you share it out. The other thing is this, make a date every other Tuesday. We have Investing Tuesdays is just for you. And next week we have a better plan going deeper and deeper to ensure that by the end of this series, you get to invest better and deeply. You know, it's, it's more like a journey to your wealth, you know? So make sure that you make uh, a date with us every other Tuesday, right here. The NSC is your friend, uh, Capital Markets Authority represented as well, just to ensure that you do very well. I can see a sign from a director. Is there anything else? Uh, ab absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I think it's time. <laughs> They're telling me it's time up because I've already gone by it. We're going to end with a clip. Uh, uh, from the yes director oh, okay yes we're going to end with a clip uh, by the NSC application that we just talked about that you can check out and it's as easy as a click on your button bye bye for now for us is uh, goodbye see you in your investment journey make that plan Investing has now gone digital with the Nairobi Securities Exchange application when did you start your investment journey and how, how was it and what would you advise a young Paul that wants to start his investment journey today? I think the one and the clear obvious one is uh, to start early. In an investment journey, you don't need to accumulate millions or hundreds or thousands of cash. For as low as 200, 300 shillings today, you can buy 100 shares of a company. 
And right now, today, at the palm of your hand, you have so much information available to you. Yes, the COVID situation will affect our economy, will affect uh, a number of years, but it won't affect them all in the same way. The market has made money. I've made many mistakes. I've made investments in people business. People's businesses lost money. Investing Tuesdays.